Murderer Brian Radigan has returned to limelight as one of Dublin's most notable criminals after serving over 20 years in prison. There have been allegations that the drug dealer's criminal activity has diminished since he was sentenced to 18 years in prison. However, detectives believe that his organization is currently one of the main players in the capital's drug trade, making them a high-priority target for Gotti. What put him behind bars in the first place? And what is he up to now? In this video, I'll tell you all about it. Born and reared in Crumlin is Brian Radigan better known by his stage name King Rat. His leadership of one of the two rival factions in the historic from Lindrina feud in the early 2000s is what first brought him to public attention. By the year 2000, a gang of young friends from Crumlin and the South Inner City had advanced from auto theft and street dealing to becoming South Dublin's primary heroin suppliers. A guard stationed in a room at the Holiday Inn on Pierce Street in Dublin sparked the conflict on March 9, 2000. The three men inside the room were in the process of cutting cocaine. More than 10 members of the adolescent Crumlin and drummer-based gang, including Brian Radigan, were expected to share in the profits from the drug sales. They were hauled into custody after two kilograms of cocaine and 49,000 ecstasy tablets were found. They all three held their tongues and refused to assist the pursuing detectives. After only two days of questioning, one of them, senior gang member Declan Gavin, who was 20 at the time, was freed without being charged. Gavin wasn't actually in the room with the drugs when Guard entered, which explains why. Just before Guardy came, he had already left. The two other gang members present were charged with having cocaine and ecstasy with the purpose of selling them. They got convicted and spent years in prison. Despite the absence of proof, several gang members called Governor Rat right away and declared that he was an informant. Due to this circumstance, the gang split into two rival factions, with Freddie Thompson from Loretto Road in Maryland leading the other, and Brian Radigan and his brother from Cooley Road in Drenner commanding the former. The latter would essentially combine with other criminals with a Crumlin base to create the South Inner City suppliers of the Kinahan Cartel. The conflict's first casualty was Declan Gavin, a close friend of Freddie Thompson. He was fatally stabbed outside a fast food restaurant in Crumlin in August 2001 by a masked assailant who made off in a getaway car driven by a companion. Radigan was informed that Gavin was outside that restaurant when he was celebrating his brother's birthday at a home in Drimmer. A court would later hear. It is said that Thompson has always vowed revenge for the killing. Joseph Radigan Bryan, his 18-year-old brother, was the next victim. In July 2002, he was fatally shot on Drimmer's Cooley Road. Later, Radigan was determined to have killed Gavin and 15 additional persons during the dispute. Even though Brian Radigan was shot, he was still able to flee by scaling the upper window of his house. After shooting at the Gata while being pursued, Radigan was put behind bars in 2003, long before he was found guilty of killing Gavin in December 2000. This act, along with several other violent and drug-related offenses, resulted in a 13-year jail sentence. That year, Brian Radigan was found guilty of the murder of Declan Gavin. In addition to the required life term, he also received a 13-year sentence for firing at a security guard in 2003. The locals had thought that this, along with the demise of the Cannon, would put an end to the feud. In Dublin in the year 2000, Anthony Cannon was the 15th gangland victim to be shot and killed. However, the feud was once again in the news after two murders in as many days. On September 24, 2012, a shooter entered into the poor Tarlington house of 27-year-old Gerard Eglinton and shot him in front of his 11-year-old stepdaughter and one-month-old son. Declan O'Reilly was fatally murdered in front of his little son the following day as the two were strolling down Dublin's South Circular Road. O'Reilly had previously survived an attempt on his life. The guard suspects that one of Freddie Thompson is close friends bordered the murders. When Brian Radigan was found guilty in 2013 of running a narcotics network out of his cell, he was sentenced to an additional 17 years in jail. He was the first individual in the state to be convicted of narcotics trafficking while incarcerated. 
The 32-year-old was found guilty of retaining Harrow in valued at $1 million in his possession while he was a prisoner for the purpose of trading. When Gardy searched Radigan's cell on the prison Z landing, he was sitting up in bed and holding the phone. Half bars and nine attributed to names like Ganko and MacGyver were mentioned in text messages from Radigan. According to the court, the list and the notes that were found in his cell amounted to orders for the sale of drugs. Radigan's gang has all but broken up, and none of his friends showed up to defend him in court when he was found guilty. In 27, Radigan was found guilty of manslaughter after entering a guilty plea and winning his Supreme Court appeal against the murder of Declan Gavin in 2001. Over the past year, he has been reported by Gata sources in the UK and Spain. Radigan claimed in court that he had become a law-abiding citizen, but since being released from prison, he has reverted back into one of the most significant crime figures in Dublin. Gardy currently believe Radigan has re-emerged as one of the key actors in the capital's organized crime scene as a result of several recent high-value drug and weapon seizures with which he is involved. He and his gang are also being looked into for two murders this year. In September, a Radigan acquaintance in his 20s attacked Tony Dempsey fatally in the north inner city. The 28-year remains olds were discovered in an unit at Kevin Barry House on Coleraine Street one week after his death, while people came and went. And in a premeditated attack in June outside a hotel in Kilmainham, Gary Carey was shot multiple times, for the third time in approximately a year. He had been the target of a shooting, and he was now in danger of dying. He passed away a couple of weeks later. Carey is thought to have told first responders that Radigan was in charge of the shooting while he was getting medical attention on the scene. The main suspects in the attempted murder of Gary Carey are associates of Radigan. Carey and Radigan, as well as the family from West Dublin, have been at odds for a very long time. Detectives are trying to determine whether Radigan was involved in planning the attack or if West Dublin criminals are to blame despite the fact that he is not suspected of being directly involved. If the detectives are right, Radigan has re-emerged as a prominent underworld figure. Gotti think Radigan now spends most of his time in Spain, where he is the boss of a criminal gang that controls parts of South Inner City, West Dublin, and Dublin 12. That was it for today's video. What are your thoughts on this topic? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.